Okay, <clears throat> this is another recorded session on one of the papers I've done. This is to the Journal of Forensic and Legal Medicine. Again, this was published in 2019, and this is the research paper entitled Anabolic Androgenic Steroids, AAS Users on AAS Use, Negative Effects, Code of Silence, and Implications for Forensic and Medical Professionals, led by myself, Andrew Richardson, and co-author Georges Antonopoulos, both at Teesside University in the Kingdom. Abstract. AAS use are image and performance enhancing drugs or IPEDs or IPEDs for short that can improve endurance and affect performance, reduce body fat and stimulate muscle growth. The use of steroids has been studied in the medical and psychological literature in the sociology of sport, health and masculinity and recently relative and relatively recently in criminology. Whilst there is a significant medical and psychological evidence on the short-term and longer side effects of AAS, there is surprisingly very little evidence on the user's perception of the negative aspects of AAS use. Drawing on ethnographic research conducted in a locale in the northeast of England, an additional interview with 24 AAS users, the article offers an account of the negative aspects of AAS as put forward by users, such as acne, abscesses and mood alterations and highlights the code of silence that exists around AAS use. This code makes AAS users a hard to reach group for medical professionals. By listening to the participants' perspectives, forensic and medical professionals can be better informed towards monitoring and reducing harms from AAS. Introduction. Anabolic androgenic steroids are essentially synthetic derivatives mimicking natural hormones that regulate and control how the body develops and maintains itself. Functioning in a similar way to the male hormone testosterone, they can improve endurance and athletic performance, reduce body fat and stimulate muscle growth. Arguably, steroids are primarily misused, used by men as a way of improving sports performance and speeding up the process of healing after an injury or to build muscle mass and bulk up. The use of steroids has been studied extensively in the medical and psychological psychiatric, psychiatric literature. In the sociology, sport, health, and masculinity, and relatively recently in criminology. Whilst there is significant medical and psychological evidence on the short and longer side effects of AAS, there is surprisingly very little evidence based on the user's perception of the negative aspects of AAS use. The aims of the article are number one, firstly, to offer an account of the negative effects of AAS use. Here we do not offer an extensive and complete account of the negative effects of steroid use, but only to put only those put forward by the users interviewed in the course of our study. Secondly, to highlight the code of science that exists around AAS use, a code that makes AAS users a hard to reach group for medical professionals. Section two, the methodology. The article draws on original empirical research, including ethnographic research conducted for 14 months, January 2014 to February 20. 15 in a locale in the northeast of England with one of the highest rates of steroid use in the UK. During this period, research related activities such as observation took place at least three times per week, with the exception of August 2014. The primary research site was a gym in which the use and trade of steroids is widespread. Data was also collected at fine events, bodybuilding competitions, and production, product promotion events in the area. An additional 24 interviews with AAS users were conducted in 2017. Participants' direct words are used in this article and, su and pseudonyms are used to protect their identity. Harmony. All participants were informed about the purpose and the nature of our research as well as the rights as participants as put forward by the Code of Ethics of the British Society of Criminology. Section 3, the findings. Subsection 3.1, negative effects of using AAS. It is well documented that one of the side effects in individuals may suffer when using AAS is abscess and acne. Sean talks about his friend getting an infection from using a needle. He said he injected his mate with the gear, gear being the, the steroids, anabolics, whatnot, and he got a massive abscess on his leg and he had to go to hospital and then basically two weeks out of training. Mitchell explains his acne experiences. When I come to the end of my course, the course being the cycle of steroids you took, I had really bad breakout in acne, really bad on my shoulders, on my back, and my chest. All my hard work, but I didn't dare take my top off because I was embarrassed. I wanted everyone to tell me I looked good. All the participants were not as lucky as Mitchell in terms of mild side effects. 
iPads and AAS have been known to cause alteration in one's mood. The following comments from participants are all related to their mental and mood state from these substances. Andrew, for example, noted, the fucking horrible thing about steroids is you push after is that is you sorry the fucking horrible thing about steroids is you push that plunger down and this is what i felt like i wanted the claw out of me after realizing what happened i want to claw all those chemicals out of me i'll tell you exactly how it feels like it's like a door i've opened and i can't ever shut again i can keep it pulled tight but i've got to keep it pulled tight bobby adds a similar comment regarding his mental state I was in a dark place mentally at the time and so didn't feel the positive mental effects test or testosterone can give. Taking them also made me very nervous. To end the section, Stephen concludes with his in-depth perspective on his own usage and others he knew. If I was speaking to someone and they came out and said they were going to use AAS and they never used them before, I would have to break down in tears in front of him just to put it into words. If I were to use it again, it would be like putting a loaded gun to my head, and to put it mildly. I think we're put together really good by God or whatever or whomever. I can't answer for God, but I may qualify for me. This is in reference to people, some I have known, whom have lost their life due to the use of performance-enhancing drugs. From reading the above comments, and although our sample of AS users is relatively small, it is obvious that the range of negative experiences differs from participant to participant. And as with any substance, its reaction to the individual has varying levels. Section 3.2, Code of Silence. Patterns of use and supply of AS are patient are patently conditioned by its embeddedness in the gym slash bodybuilding scene and this greatly affects not only relations between actors in the subculture and their willingness to openly discuss AAS and their use but also how users are viewed by outsiders. Andrew explains how he felt regarding his AAS use and other IP iPads. Yes we like to keep it hidden that you can't talk or you can't tell anyone about so you don't know what you're doing. If I go anywhere and say I've taken them it's like you've you fucking cheated. Andrew then goes deeper into his analogy by providing an example of this silence and pr practice. He talks about his training partner and one instance that happened in the gym with him. We'll talk off the record. This guy trained at the same gym as me. He came in one day doing overhead press and he collapsed on the floor. No heartbeat, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Got him to the hospital, took him to the hospital, and they, and they, as in the doctors, were like, right, it's heart, liver, kidney failure with a stomach ulcer. Do you take steroids? His response, no. This is because his girlfriend was in the room. So she left, and he was like, yes, I do. That, that, yes, I do, yes. Andrew goes on to say, that is the problem, such a mental problem with it. This behaviour of being silent around outsiders or significant others, such as family members and partners, is very common among participants. Richard, for example, mentioned an event which the information provided when the cameras were on and off was different. I was at a seminar about a year and a half ago, and it was being videoed for YouTube. The video cameras were on, and he was talking about training, training programmes, training cycles, and then the cameras went off. He says, now let's talk anabolics. Now, any questions about anabolics, which was interesting to me. It was crazy then with the stuff he came out with about anabolics whenever the cameras are off. Actually, somebody asked him about when the cameras are on, and he said, I'm not here to talk about that. This code of silence around AAS changes depending on the audience or the medium of communication. AAS users are known to communicate more and more freely on forums which are the platform of communication for like-minded individuals and may guarantee privacy of participants and share advice. This code of science is not however only due to users being viewed in a negative light by outsiders and the mainstream media spinning stories targeting the particular subculture as well as the fear of substances in the non-sporting world creating a framework of understanding of and policy against substances in sports. It's also due to the dynamics within the bodybuilding and AASU subculture itself. Specifically, there's a process of trust building which allows AAS users and traders to manage many of the risks involved and is often based on a genuine interest in others and their progress in bodybuilding. During the ethnographic research, one of the researchers witnessed a gym attendee actively looking for steroids who'd been training for a year and was not satisfied with his progress. In an open conversation about the issue with the gym owner who was a known steroid trader, a mentor-mentee relationship was forged. Instead of immediately agreeing to provide steroids, a lengthy discussion about exercise, patterns, diet, and necessary steps he should take before resorting steroids took place. 
The mentality and approach of this, of this particular trader is, according to many of the participants we interviewed from the gym, is the with is uh, sorry. The mentality and approach of this particular trader is, according to many of the participants we interviewed from the gym bodybuilding scene, very common and highlights not only that not all steroid traders fit the stereotype of a drug entrepreneur who is motivated by profit alone, but that within this subculture, AAS users are close to people with technical knowledge about AAS, their administration and the ways of mitigating possible dangers from use. The side effect of this positive aspect, however, is that when the use becomes in any way problematic, advice is very rarely, if at all, sought from medical professionals such as a GP. As such, it is difficult for these professionals to truly understand the culture, thus preventing good education and or the flow of relevant and useful information. Section 4, Conclusion and Implications. Some main findings emerge from the collected data. Specifically, there is a range of negative experiences which differ from participant to participant. Moreover, the negative perceptions of AAS and IPDs in general usage combined with sensational media headlines around doping has reinforced the particular subculture's inward-looking attitude. Users not willing to talk about use and their negative effects to outsiders, unlike what the case in relation to other drugs, and this makes AAS users a harder-to-reach group for medical slash health professionals. As anti-doping policy has shifted and become more punitive, the distribution of AAS and other iPads has moved away from dealers in bed in a sporting subculture to a range of non-experts, which leaves users at greater risk. The internet provides abundant opportunities for such non-expert suppliers active in the AAS market, offering mechanisms used to target those users who lack contacts in a local gym culture. In these instances, there are a number of risks for online consumers to weigh up, including the presence of illegally produced counterfeit and or substandard substances, a phenomenon which has been highlighted by forensic scientists internationally and not only in relation to AAS. Obtaining and understanding the user's perception of AAS and negative experiences of the substances, as well as understanding the dynamics of cultures and instances in which the presence of similar thinking individuals has a formative effect on their involvement in AAS use which is essential in preventing harm and mitigating the range of negative experiences of using these steroids. Future research at local, national and international levels offering further empirical breadth and analytical depth to advance our understanding of the complex motivations and harms associated with steroid use is needed in order to uh, to in needed in order for levels of prevention and harm reduction to be informed. Myself and George just don't have any conflict of interest. I will post a link to the paper in the YouTube comments section, along with comments for all the references as well. Again, this was quite a short, snappy article. Um, I personally do prefer this styles of articles to make when writing because it's just straight to the point, gets the key findings out there, and there's not much writing involved, and there's very little waffle around it. Um, medical style journals are quite good for that if you're thinking about getting a paper right there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thank you again for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions or comments, fire them in the comments section below. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.